So for those of you on the audio podcast, you've got the full version. Turns out if you're watching this on YouTube, you've got the slightly ed edited, truncated, shortened, consumer friendly. That's a, a long way of putting that, that I forgot to hit record on the video. So to hear Sammy at full chatter about Apple resellers, you need to go and check out the audio podcast, which will be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the good places. But you can get to look at his beautiful face here, but just not for quite as long as it should have been. Sorry about that. If there's this an Apple happen, naughty step, okay. I'm on it. Cringe. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we've got it all over there. We were talking about, before. well, I realised I hadn't hit record. Uh, we were talking about the fact that uh, on the M2s, yeah, you can edit 4K video. And what I realised this week was that uh, I think a lot of the videos that are being made in the tech space on YouTube are being made for almost the converted market. And that market aren't going to be buying probably aren't going to be buying the M2. The people that are watching TechTube, as you said, are very spec driven. Whether or not they're going to buy anything, they're obsessed with the specs. And it's weird that you're making videos of people that aren't going to buy it. And yet if you make videos of people that are going to buy it, they're probably not going to watch the videos. It's this weird, and it, 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 something came to me this week. It, it, it's such a weird little vortex and space that we're in, both written and video. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, the, the market that the M2 is targeting, you know, they're not people who are on Twitter. They're not people who are watching YouTube or watching mm -hmm. tech videos on YouTube. You know, th these are, um, you know, these are just people that want a Mac to browse the web, check your email, you know, occasionally maybe edit a video from their vacation. You know, the, uh, you know, a video, you know, a video editor. They're not going to go out and buy a MacBook Air. And it's this constant obsession that, you know, that, that Apple, it, it's, it's really weird. I don't understand it. And it's, it's, it's annoying to me to see, to see the conversation so misconstrued and, um, and it's, it's unfortunate because the, you know, the MacBook Air is a great laptop. It's, it's, uh, M2 yeah. is great as well. And it's just getting overshadowed with, um, with all this controversy, you know, the other thing I'd say is, is I think this is human nature is that, you know, you'll, you'll never be fully happy no matter what you have. Uh, hmm. you know, so Apple could have given us, you know, a really, you know, they could have put M1 max in the MacBook Air and somehow gave us really good battery life in a really thin package and people would still be complaining over something. That's so right. no matter what Apple does, there will always be those people that are just, uh, they're not, they're not haters. They're just naggers. They'll, They'll nag, they'll complain, they'll, they'll, they'll make a fist no matter what Apple does. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It, it seems that you and I are very much singing from the same uh, hymn sheet then because I, I, I've put a video out and I, I said that this little MacBook Air, I've got it sitting right there with my notes on for this interview. You know? And mm. I was saying, it almost feels like I'd need to defend a newborn child because Everyone's getting on it, and I think the title of the video is Haters Can Hate, but it does its job. Now, on the video, I actually edited a newsletter. It was a little, very simple six, seven minute video, and I wasn't, I had, against the M1 MacBook Pro, but it wasn't a competition. I was saying, look, yeah, it's three minutes slower, but it can do it. If you're stuck in a hotel room and that's all you've got and you need to get a video done, it can do it. And that's kind of the point that we need to make here. Sure, it's a little bit slower. Sure, it gets a little bit warm, but you can take that anywhere, do anything you want on it. And, uh, you know, that's the 512 version, and it does me proud. I'm not going to edit on it all the time. Why would I have got a 16-inch sitting in front of me? But, you know, it can do it. Yeah, you know, I think the, the, I think the bigger part that annoys uh, Apple and probably Apple's PR department, uh, and if anyone's watching from there, hello. Reply to my <laughs> emails, please. Uh, <laughs> yes, reply to my um, How big do you think you are? Uh, I think I think the most annoying part about the M2 MacBook Air is that people are forgetting the design and the fact that Apple Silicon is, is is at a point where it's so incredibly efficient and it's so incredibly powerful per watt uh, that we're able to even get a laptop as thin as that. Mm. I mean, you know, Apple would not have been able to give us this design with an Intel chip. Uh, you know, th they would have been able to do it if you wanted 30 minutes battery life. Uh, you know, the fact that Apple Silicon enabled this, you know, this design of this chip, the fact that um, Apple Silicon allowed Apple to make such a thin and light laptop 
you know, I think that's the bigger picture that, that we should be focusing on. It's not, you know, it's not a fast high end computer, but come on. I mean, you know, give Apple credit where it's due. I mean, the fact that they were able to, to, to you know, to make such a thin and compact laptop with good performance, good battery life um, is, is impressive. Yeah, I'm with you. Totally, you know, I'm with you. I think this is this is the MacBook Air that Steve Jobs wanted. Uh, I think this is this is the true this is the first true MacBook Air, in my opinion. Uh, it's the first one that uh, gives acceptable levels of battery life and acceptable levels of performance. Uh, I think Apple was never truly happy with any of the other MacBook Airs. Uh, I think this is the, this is the first one that they're they're probably going to say yes. This you know this is the this is the MacBook Air we've always wanted to make. Yeah, we tick the boxes. We're there. Yeah. So, what kit are you actually running at the moment? Then, this way, you say you work on PCs. Uh, <laughs> that would be a that would be an interesting <laughs> turn of events. Which, which, not jokingly, I, I would love to actually try out a, a Windows Surface uh, laptop. I, mm-hmm. um, I, I tried out a. a, a I have the Galaxy S twenty two Ultra that I got uh, a few months ago um, because I, I understood that as much as I cover Apple, there's, there's also another, there's another side of the tech world and it would be unresponsible for me not to have been exposed to that side. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause, uh, you know, it gives me a new perspective uh, and it gives me, uh, more clarity on why someone would choose one over the other. So I would absolutely love to use windows, but currently I'm on a 16 inch, uh, M one pro 32 gig Ram, MacBook Pro. Yeah, very similar to mine. I think I've got them in one Max, and I did. Just, I went that route. Well, because it was the only one I could get in the UK. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> it was as simple as that. I told you that story early on. Well, not if you're watching the video clearly, because I wasn't recording watching it. the video. But yeah. <laughs> if you listen to the audio, yeah, I mean that was and it was purely supply and demand. But it's it's a it's a fantastic. And I came from 2015 uh, iMac, Intel iMac, and so you can imagine the I was change just about I noticed. To say. My my main workstation is a 2015 5K iMac. That's what mm-hmm. I use. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't actually use my 16 inch. Uh, I use my 16 inch um, usually just in my bedroom, uh, outside of my office, or like in the living room. But when I'm at my desk, I, I I have a 2015 5K iMac, and it's it's really really good. I mm-hmm. I upgraded it to an SSD because I got it with the hard drive, so I mm-hmm. uh, DOI'd uh, an SSD into it. Uh, it has 64 gigs of RAM, uh, which is more than my uh, my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it, it absolutely flies through. It's in, in sometimes I think it's actually faster than my MacBook Pro, oddly mm. enough. So I and um, yeah, and I'm actually quite disappointed. Mac OS Ventura is not going to be supported on it. So exactly, uh, I was just you, yeah, you're over the same era, of course. We come to an end, don't we, this summer? That's it. We're done. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's it's disappointing, but it still has a few more years left. It'll chug on. They are, yeah, I mean, we, you know, I don't know about you, but when you got old Macs, I kind of buy and sell them. But that one, for some reason, means a lot to me because I, I think I've just done a lot with it and you know achieved a lot through yeah. that Mac. So that's going nowhere. That that one keeping, mm-hmm. and it's still a great machine, as you say. Apart from the fact it won't be getting a new OS later this year. Of OSs, do you run betas on your devices or not? Your personal devices? Oh, he nods. He nods in a knowing way. Yeah. Is that a, is that a I am, problem? Is that a bug? You know, I've always heard you should not do it if it's your sole device. Yeah, you should not. No, I even even yeah, even I would tell people don't put it on your personal device as I'm installing it on my personal device. <laughs> no, I I have the I have I have the beta. I have because I have it's your profession, right? Single Apple device. Yeah, and and uh, yeah yeah, I, mean, I have it on every device. Every Mac I have is on the beta. Uh, my iPhone is on the beta. My even my watch is on the beta, which is the most risky because you can't take a, a, a uh, you can't take a beta off a watch. Uh, once you enroll in the beta, you have to wait till it publicly gets releases before you want to you know kick off the beta program. Um, all of my iPads are on the betas. My Apple TV is on the beta. My five HomePods are on the beta. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite uh, I'm quite deep in the beta world. Yeah. What what sixteen mean like to use them? It has been good. Um, the it's weird with the iOS 16 beta. It, it it gets progressively more buggy as as the more you use it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's odd. The first beta, uh, and this this is a trend I've noticed with every iOS release every year. The first beta of every major update is always the best one. Uh, Which is the absolute opposite of what I thought first, it would have been. 
yeah, you think it'd be the last final polished version would be the most stable, but in my experience, no. It's usually the, the, the first beta of, of iOS 14 or, or 13, which is when I sort of entered this, this field. Uh, iOS 13, 14, 15, and now 16, the first betas of each were more stable than the actual official one we got. And I thought a lot about this, and I thought a lot about why, and I think the reason is, is because a lot of the features and a lot of the more advanced features are usually disabled on the first beta. So there were a few iOS 16 features that were disabled in the first beta, so the system was a little bit more lightweight compared to um, the third beta that we're on now. Uh, but yeah, it, it gets, after the first beta, it gets progressively worse. I mean, my iPhone uh, crashes and restarts randomly at least four or five times a day. Uh, just scrolling Twitter, oops, it crashes. A few seconds later, it's back up. So yeah, it gets it gets progressively worse, but uh, all the other betas have been quite good. And I mean, I think the thing I'm probably looking forward to the most is the unsend message. Not because I make a lot of bad messages. I just want to say that's mm -hmm. not the reason. I'm pure as sure. driven snow. Never made that mistake before in my life. I'm just saying it's a convenient feature for a man to have at his disposal. But I mean, that is, does that work? Because you've got to, the other person also has to be on iOS 16, right? Uh, I should know this. I'm sure I, that's I, the I'm case. I'm pretty sure if you're on, well, they won't. So if you unsend a message, no, I think I think even if someone's on iOS 15, I, I, I am I'm confident they made a the Apple made a server site change. So if you unsend a message, it actually does just disappear from the transcript on on iOS 15 devices. What it won't show is the little text that says X and X has unsent a message. Right, right, right. It'll just disappear from the transcript. Yeah, I'm um, with you. You know what's what's funny is 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 a lot of people were really excited about the ability to edit messages and the ability to unsend messages. I have forgot about both of those features. <laughs> I've completely forgotten they've existed. I mean, I, I, iMessage is my main app that I use to communicate. Uh, and I've, I've completely forgot that if I make a typo, I can just un edit Under. that message instead of sending a correction. And I think a reason why is I don't like the system in which Apple has um, implemented how you trigger a change. Because you have to uh, tap and hold on the message, wait for the little pop-up to come, select edit, and then edit it. Um, I'm not sure if there's another, maybe like a triple tap on a message to quickly enter edit or something, but I think the, the, the way you have to get into the menu and to unsend or edit a message, I think that's a little bit, um, it's a little bit unwelcoming to me. Either so which way, I'm it's better than Twitter's version. <laughs> you got me there. Yep. Why, why, yeah, just, there. why, why can't we unsend a message on Twitter or edit at least? Why? Ask Elon. I don't know. We'll leave that one. Hang yeah, I've asked him to come on the show. Surprisingly, not heard back. Who'd have, who'd have thunk that, eh? <laughs> now, I'm not, a, I'm not a big iPad user. I'm, I've got an iPad mini and I just use it for basic, you know, well, Twitter and bits and bobs. Like I haven't got an iPad Pro, which I'm guessing, have, have you? Yeah, I do. Let's talk stage manager then. I will let you take to the floor and tell us good, bad, ugly, useful or not. Um, yeah, so I, I have an M1, uh, I was about to say 16 inch iPad Pro, Ooh. uh, an M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and I absolutely love Stage Manager. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are complaining about it and a lot of people that aren't happy with it. I think the reason why so many people aren't happy with it is because it's not the Mac. And I, there, there's this obsession that Apple needs to turn the iPad into a touchscreen Mac. Uh, that is what pretty much everyone is asking for. And I don't think they'll ever do that. I don't think they should do that. A stage manager to me on the iPad is a perfect, uh, is a perfect solution to all of our iPad problems. Uh, it's not a perfect experience in beta, but um, I, I find myself using my iPad more because of it. I, I once it's out of beta, I, I genuinely could not use my Mac anymore, and really and just and just use my iPad for for my line of work. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying this for everyone. For for my specific workflow, for what I do, I could absolutely uh, turn and, and just be completely iPad exclusive. I won't, but I uh, it would be it would be a, a big adjustment. It would be a learning curve for sure. It, it does require some some effort to sort of mentally 
uh, because there, there are certain gestures and certain behaviors on the Mac that you would expect uh, to be available on state manuals on the iPad, but it's just not. So um, it, it would take a little bit of, of, a, of a learning curve, but I could, I could definitely foresee myself um, uh, moving to iPad, app, iPad only. The, I know the, the, the rather odd official term that Apple gives them are piles. We'll leave that one as it is. But do you assign what goes into it or does it look at it and say, OK, well, that's a browser that's, you know, put Safari and Chrome together. Or do you decide, right, that's my favorite stack. I'll put all those together. How does that process actually work? No, you can you can put whatever you want together. Uh, the only sort of heavy lifting that the system does, and this is something I've I've sent Apple feedback for, is you can't freely place app windows anywhere you want. There is a little bit of snapping that it does to sort of snap windows in a certain corner or in a certain frame. Uh, it's not like the Mac where you can you can place them anywhere. Uh, no, there is a little bit of snapping on the uh, with Stage Manager, so it's not entirely sort of like a like a stacking system like the the Mac. Um, it is annoying, but um, yeah, they might change it. I've, I've sent them feedback, and, and we'll have to see what the final version is. And to enable it, you go into the menu bar. That's right. It's not uh, one of those things. It's obviously it's not in the dock or anything, is it? It's something you physically have to go and enable. Yeah. So it, there's a, there's toggle in, in control center, uh, but there's mm -hmm. also you can actually if you're in a, if you're an app outside of Stage Manager, uh, you can actually swipe uh, from the bottom right corner with your finger, and that'll trigger Stage Manager. Uh, and then that that app goes into a window, and then you have access to your dock and all your other recent apps, and then you can start, um, you know, you can start going ham with it um yeah but I'm, i mean i'm a good boy me so i haven't got betas on my system here but of course stacks is coming to or stage manager is honestly no one sent messages no beat i'm a i'm a good good chap really am good find um you stage manager is also coming to the mac right as well it is yeah so you've used it across um, the platform i guess have you i have um on the mac i i like it on the mac because um, when you have app desktops, you kind of, or, or, or apps just in your dock, uh, hidden, you tend to forget what you were doing. Uh, I mean, so with me, I often see, look at my dock and I find an app that I have open. I forgot why that app is open or, you know, I forgot what I was doing with that app or, or, or whatever with stage manage that kind of solves that because then you can just have all your recent apps visible on the side. Uh, and then it shows you a preview of what that app is. I mean, it's a live preview of that app. Uh, so if you have like, you know, messages open, you'll actually sort of subtly see movement on that side of your screen. And then you'll know that the mess you're, you're getting a message other than a notification. So to me, I like it because it just shows me my apps there. So it's, it's sort of like a subconscious reminder of what apps I have open and what I was doing with those apps in relation to other apps. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely, I, I, I do like it on the Mac as well. It, it, it feels like a feature they designed definitely for the iPad. I mean, this was a feature I felt they designed initially for the iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they said, hey, let's bring it to the Mac as well. Uh, you know, this was one of those those features that they, I think they, they originally start. well, there was actually a version of Stage Manager before Mac OS Ventura. I'm not sure which OS it was, but it was many, many, many years ago. There was uh, something, maybe it was in beta. I'm not sure if it ever left beta, but Stage Manager is not actually new. It's not actually a new idea. Apple has done this before. Right, right, right. Uh, I would have to uh, to research what OS it was. This was before they renamed to Mac OS. This was OS ten something. Uh, mm -hmm. This was long, long ago. But Stage Manager is not new. Uh, they just tried it then. Yes, they didn't like it, so they tossed it, and they just decided to bring it back now. But um, this year, it felt like they they spent a lot of time, you know, focusing on the iPad, and they just decided to bring it to the Mac uh, as well. So I, I do think it's uh, it's nice having it on both. Without doubt, that's the most positive indictment I've heard of Stage Manager. A lot of people have given it some weird and negative feedback. But you seem to be—I mean, I'm looking forward to using it now. Yeah, I uh, yeah. Well, wait till it's out of beta because you're 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 a good person and you follow the rules. So I, don't, I don't get the beta it. yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once it once it's out of beta, I think it'll be really good. And you know what's impressive is that um, I was initially concerned that app that apps would need to update themselves in order to take advantage of stage manager in order to be able to get resized. Uh, but no, I mean, you can resize any app without any developer uh, input. I mean, any app can get resized. There, right, there right, does yeah. not need to be any 
work on the side of developers. And that was one of the biggest concerns that I heard mm. uh, definitely from developers was that they would have to then update their UI sizing and their That's layout what I understood it to, to be, yeah. support. Yeah. Yeah, to, under, to, uh, to, uh, to be able to resize. But no, I mean, you can resize any app. Some apps work better than others, uh, obviously, in resize. So there is some tweaking that developers can do to make the experience a little bit better. But um, yeah, out of the box, out of the beta, you can, you can, you can start using it with, with any app. Be, there's a couple of other things I just wanted to run through with you before I let you get on with your day. Uh, one of which was Apple Watch. I noticed that you had one on. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm still, I, I've, I've bought two. I've just given them away. Uh, I mean, I'm just that generous. Uh, altruistic really? is my middle name. Um, yeah. th- they weren't even people that I knew. Uh, <laughs> but uh, now I bought two as presents. I've yet to buy one for myself. Uh, and I think I'm finally getting the, okay, a few years late, but I'm finally getting the hang of where they're good. But maybe I'm coming to the party at the right time because, I mean, now as a health wearable, they're really stealing a march now. They're getting serious, aren't they, with what they can do? Yeah, it is It is incredible. Um, thankfully, the only medical condition I have is, is I, I usually, most of the time I have an elevated heart rate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do have medication that I can take t- that helps lower my heart rate. It is incredible to me that I have a device on my wrist that will alert me if my heart rate goes above the threshold that my doctor tells me is too high. Uh, I don't have to sit down at a clinic and put on a strap and have my heart rate measured. I mean, just the fact that this little thing on my wrist can measure my heart rate, um, give me an ECG, measure my blood oxygen level. You know, these are all things that are are, are just astonishing when you think about it um mm. and, and, and and apple is nowhere near done i mean we are just at the beginning of what the, the potential of the apple watch is it, it is going to be uh, a major major uh player in health um and, and the thing with it now is um while you can you know measure your blood oxygen level while you can take an ecg these are all things that you have to actually do and actually initiate um I think somewhere down the line, these are going to be things that are just being proactively done in the background, you know? So you're not going to have to actually stop it and have to take an ECG. Apple's going to find a way uh, to just, you know, give you an ECG in the background or something like that. So we're, we're, we're just at the beginning of the potential with the watch, and it, and it makes me excited, as you can tell. I think I mentioned to you earlier on, I had uh, Ross on, Ross Young on um, yeah. a couple of weeks back and he wears, well, he actually wears a Garmin most of the time, but apparently much like self, he's got mm. a, a slightly elevated heart rate and his doctor is really bemoaning him saying, look, you've got an Apple watch. It really helps me. The doctor saying that if you wear it, it gives me information that I need. So I mean, that, that just shows that's, you know, a, a, somebody, a, a man of medicine saying that these things are good. They're not just play things. The figures they're giving are genuine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 more than a watch. Uh, I mean, it, it you know, there's there's an Apple Watch ad. It says, it, I think it was it tells time or something. I don't know if you remember it. It was the Apple Watch. It tells time and it does all these other things. Um, but it's true. I mean, it's you know, it's much more than a watch. Um, yeah, no, I think finally I might, uh, well, one, the eight's coming out. What's your take on this whole pro or rugged thing? Is it? I mean, Ross said that it's happening. He's seen the displays, so apparently, you know, God has spoken. It is happening. Um, is that something? I can't think I'm going to need a rugged watch. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. To, do say I to need that. rugged? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying it myself. And Jesus, do I need a rugged watch? I hardly think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that watch going to be aimed at then? Because no, it's going to have a hefty price tag on it, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's going to be aimed for for athletes, um, um, bikers, swimmers, um, yeah, anyone who does athletic things. That's going to be the watch for them. Uh, I, I definitely think we are. Yeah, we're definitely getting a, a more beefed up, durable watch. I don't think the design is going to be that much different than the normal one. I think it's going to come down to the materials they use. might be a little bit thicker just to kind of have some shock, resi- shock resistance or something along those lines. But I think it's going to come down to the materials. They use more high-end materials. They'll, they'll obviously market it as more durable than the normal ones. Um, so yeah, I definitely think we're getting one. Uh, probably not for me. But, uh, what what watch do you have? There for you. I have the Series 6 stainless steel. Now, I think I need yeah. to get myself into that market. I might as well wait now till the eight comes out, just because. But I mean, I think it's time. Time's come. I think that you before an wait, iPad wait for, for me, actually. Or, yeah, I, I would probably advise an Apple Watch for the iPad too. I mean, you, you could get the eight or wait for the second generation Apple Watch SE. 
the SC is a great uh, is a great watch if it's your first Apple Watch because uh, it kind of just gets you into that. You know, it has enough features to expose you to the world of Apple Watch, but mm-hmm. you know, it's not everything, and, and it's a little bit cheaper as well. So, wait for the second generation of that one. And uh, yeah, good shout. And um, yeah. And I, I can't really let you go without talking iPhone 14. See, I thought you'd got away with it. Afraid not. I promise. Almost the last question. So iPhone 14, it sounds like we're getting a real mark in the sand now between the functions and functionality and hardware upgrades that are going to be on the pros as opposed to the non-pros. Of course, it's slimmed down to a four-range version this year, and they're making it very clear to steer you towards the pro phones, aren't they, With even down to the 48-megapixel camera, the processor, all of these things are only going to be available on the pro phones. Do you think that's a, a, a sharp move from Apple? I mean, I know you're not an Apple sheep, so you're not going to say it's good if it's not good. So what's your take? I, contrary to many people on Twitter, I'm not an Apple sheep. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, you only need to listen back to sure earlier in this. <laughs> no, I think we've, you've made Definitely that quite clear. Not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that I, dream I, of going I, to I'm Apple impartial. Park, that ain't happening. <laughs> not, not. Um, I... I think it was a long time coming. Uh, I think they were going to separate the pros and the almost and the um, the pros and the non pros eventually. I think they were going to always give those two more differentiation. Um, yeah, we are apparently still getting to have the A15 on the 14 and the 14. Oh, these names are getting confusing. Oh, oh hell, 14, I know. 14, 14, 14 pro. pro. And, and 14, 14 Max. Pro Max. And Pro Max, isn't and it? 14 Max. And I, yeah, oh my God. I can't. It's going to be hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, imagine going to a store and trying to. I feel bad for the Apple store employees <laughs> because they'll, they'll be there trying to, to explain the difference between the iPhone 14 Max and the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. Um, yeah, apparently we're still going to have the A15 Bionic on the older um, on the, the iPhone, four, the, the, the low end 14 no, models. Uh, a yeah. lot of people are freaking out about that. Um, but the A15 Bionic is still pretty fast, uh, still has five, six years of iOS updates left for it. Um, so, that, you know, that doesn't seem that big of a, of a, of a surprising move. Um, but it will be interesting to see what they change with the low end 14s compared to the 13s. Uh, you know, they're going to have to change something. I reckon it's going to be new colors. Uh, they're going to just know, kind of tweak the shading. Pretty much- Colors and you know maybe some some tweaks to the camera. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on, on the low end phones. Because of course on the, the the two pros, we're getting this. I think we're told we're getting this forty eight megapixel beast of a camera. But again, only on if you're willing to spend the money on the two big phones. Again, can't say the two big phones because yeah. they're the pros. Because you've got a big phone in the smalls now. But you know what I mean. I see what you mean about I the naming. Mean, it's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's already a nightmare. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting the 48 megapixels. We're also getting this, the whole punch pill shape notch replacement. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you, you know, the iPhone 14 Pro is is the most I've, I've been in a long time. Uh, and do you, I, I've not been this excited. Are, are you kind of guy that? I mean, part because of your job. Do you update and renew every time an iPhone comes out, or do you hold on to yours for a couple of years? I, I would love to be able to update every year. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, we do have carrier subsidies here. Uh, so I, I would be able to go to like a 24 or 12 month contract through my carrier. Ideally, you know, if Apple were to have a store here, I'd just go through the iPhone upgrade program. Um, I am currently rocking an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I decided not to get a 13 Pro Max just because it, it didn't seem like that big of a jump. Uh, to me, promotion was cool, but you know, I kind of just skimmed over it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would like to be able to upgrade every year, but it's just a matter of it being financially responsible and uh, with app, you know, not not having not having an Apple Store here, it's it's just not possible yet. And I suppose this year now, it's almost worth waiting for next year with the USB C, right? Because that's going to be the big next major, major big hardware thing. Yeah, it would. I I personally don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care. Sammy if, stands if, alone if again. USB-C, if it has USB-C, Lightning port, or USB-A port, I, 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 you know, 
I don't care. I hardly charge my phone through Lightning anymore, anyways. I You're have wireless. MagSafe. Yeah. Uh, MagSafe wireless. Yeah. So uh, I hardly ever use my port now. Mm hmm. And the you, I know you run in the betas, so or betas, betas, betas or betas. I say betas. I'll take your lead. You're more knowledgeable <laughs> than I. You you're out there in the real right. world. I'm not. So, <laughs> so um, the home screen is it as sexy and as groovy as it sounds? The whole you know being able to no. do that cut out picture thing and. You mean the person, lock screen? The lock screen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is really cool. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. It, what really blew my mind away is that if you have a picture that has a clear subject and that subject has bubbles, okay, the system is smart enough to actually recognize the bubbles. And if you put the bubbles in front of the time, the time will actually come through. It, <laughs> somehow Apple's magic is able to determine what's transparent and what isn't transparent. And it, it does an incredible job. I mean, even with portraits, I mean, because mm. hair is really difficult to sort of give with Cut depth. out, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's incredible the level of detail that Apple has been able to give. And I think a lot of people only think that you can do that with portrait photos. You can take any photo. It does not have to be a portrait photo. You can <laughs> take any photo and it will identify the depth. And Damn. it blows me away every single time. It is... Um, you know, people always fuss about Apple not giving personalization and not giving users access to being able to customize their phone. You know, I think this is a prime example of them not doing it because they wanted to do it right. And, mm, and absolutely, Apple did. They did it right. They spent the time to invest in their in their uh, in their machine learning uh, for photo for photo recognition, all of that. Uh, so yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's incredible. I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of that because it shouldn't be that much longer now. I'm ho I mean, I think it's coming out in the next couple of weeks, isn't it? The full release. Uh, full release would would probably mid September, I'm guessing. Oh, a little bit longer than I thought. So, but um, those, I think the the unsend texting message thing, iMessage, and and being able to cut the photo that look and from what you're saying, it's as good to use as it looks at dub dub. It actually works. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah. What what Apple advertises is what you're getting. Uh, obviously, Apple used nicer images in their keynote. You know, obviously, nicer colors and nicer images than probably what we have on our phones. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's really really it really does a good job. They should just a be plus. grateful. They they just should be grateful they haven't got me recording their events because you'd only get half of the event. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we get Tim saying goodbye, but not him saying good morning. Absolutely. See, I, I, I wouldn't make it past the first interview, would I really? What's your track record? Well, I get half of the show. Anyway, with <laughs> Sammy, with that, I'm conscious of time. I know you've got things to be doing. So where can people find you? Where's good to hook up with you? Best place is on Twitter. Uh, Sammy, S-A-M-I-F-A-T-H-I underscore. And uh, yeah, from there, you'll see all my work. Nice, nice, nice. He's good on Twitter. Regular poster. Some good stuff. It's not always about Apple either. It's not. I try. I like. I like to mix it up. Like to I've uh, spice got my notifications for you turned on now, so I see when you're tweeting. Just be aware of that. Oh, you do. You see, that's oh, that's concerning. Comes to the top of my feed. Oh, that's 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 concerning. Because I I often put out a tweet and then like a minute later I delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't forget the time difference. I've probably already seen it. <laughs> yeah, that's a scary thing. I don't know how many people have notifications on for me, so I actually don't know how many people see it. Yeah, so, see. you know, it could be like two people see it or five or a hundred. I really don't know. So it's What yeah. I need to do is be on 24-7 oh, Sammy be Watch now. and just make sure that I reply to every tweet so there's always a record of it out there. <laughs> I'm watching be, yeah. you. I'm watching. Sammy, thank you. scary. For, for half the interview, thank, you, thank so you. For the other half of the interview, who cares? We haven't got it. <laughs> the, full, the full interview is definitely recording here over in Audition, so it will definitely be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all of that good stuff, and uh, half of it on YouTube. But the half is on YouTube, great stuff. Sammy, can't thank you enough. Enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend, and I will hopefully catch up with you very soon again. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Cheers, my man. Thank you.